In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about T statistics between means of different groups using Excel. Typically, this test is performed between an experiment group and a control group. The final Excel spreadsheet looks like this, and I'm going to walk you through it step by step. I'm also going to discuss how to interpret the results of a T test and also how to read the tables. Like always, we always set up a null hypothesis, and our null hypothesis is our experiment group and control group's means are exactly the same. Let me draw a bell curve for you. So I'll draw that in right there. We establish, or I'll put in the critical regions, which are the red area, rejection regions, I should say. And what we try to determine is the experiment group the mean of the experiment group and the mean of the control group, are their means significantly different? If the mean of the control group is, falls into the red area, then we reject the null hypothesis. I will conduct a t-test and come up with a number for t and ultimately I will figure out, is the T in the red area? And if it's in the red area, we reject the null hypothesis. If the result or the T score is in the gray area, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. I'm going to compare two groups. I'm going to compare the means, the number of participants, and the standard deviation. I'll do that for both groups. I'll calculate this for both groups. The actual formula is really nasty looking. And what I do is I compare the means of both groups, group A and group B, divided by all this stuff and it's just a don't worry about the the formula because I'm gonna write it here it's the sample size minus one times the standard deviation of group A squared plus the sample size of group B minus one times the standard deviation squared which is also the variance by the way divided by the sample size of group A plus the sample size of group B minus 2. I multiply this times the sample size of group A plus group B divided by N times N or the sample size of group A times the sample size of group B. And I'm multiplying this, I'll put it brackets around it, times this other one with brackets around it. I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel. I really am, but I want to get everything set up for you first. So now I have, um, I'm going to put some numbers to this. Use this equation and I'm going to put in some numbers. And let's say I have a hormone treatment with some numbers and a placebo, which is my control group. And I'm going to calculate the mean and the standard deviation and the number of participants. And I'll do this in Excel, so don't worry about the numbers. And there's 10 observations, by the way. And I'll do this for the hormone treatment and the placebo. I'll calculate that in Excel. And then I'll start plugging numbers in here for group A and group B. Again, the hormone treatment and the placebo. Now let me flip over to Microsoft Excel. I've already typed in some stuff. And on the left there, you'll notice I've typed in some A, B, C, D stuff. And those are just intermediate steps, and I'll tell you what those are. I also have included the data for both groups. The first thing I do is I calculate average. I hit the equal sign and type the word average. Open parentheses. Click on the top number, which is 9, and drag down. Close parentheses and enter. That's my mean or my average. Now for the placebo, hit equal, type the word average. Open parentheses. Click on 4. Drag down close parentheses, enter, and the mean is 5.1. I can easily change the format. 
the color. It's green. I'm using green and blue, but I can change that to any color I wanted to. And I'm using a pretty large font. And then notice I hit number. I can change the number of decimals as many as I want or as few as I want. And I'll leave it at two for now. And hit OK. Now I put 7.8 in and 5.1. Now I'm going to go back to Microsoft Excel and calculate the standard deviations. So I hit the equal sign and type the word STDV. So the equal sign, STDEV. Open prints. Click on the 9 and drag down. Close parentheses. And that gives me my standard deviation. I'll do the same for placebo. Hit equal STEV, open parentheses. Click on four, drag down, close parentheses, and hit the enter key. I can use the function count to determine the number of participants. So I hit equal and tap the word count, open parentheses. Click on nine and drag down, close parentheses, and hit enter. And it gives me 10. I'll do the same thing for, for placebo. And close parentheses, and also is 10. I'm also going to calculate S squared, which is the variance. So I take equal, and I click on 2.15, and I use that little hat above the 6, and type 2 for squaring. I'll do that for both. And I have my variances. There I go. Now the difference between the two means is easy to calculate. Is that's that row right there. It's going to be 7.8, hit equal sign, and take 7.8 minus 5.1, and hit enter, and voila, 2.70. Let me add that to this equation here. So the numerator becomes 2.7. There you go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take n minus 1 times s squared of the variance. And I'm going to do that for both the hormone treatment and the placebo. I'm going to call that A. So I hit the equal sign. And I click on 10, which is N. And I'll do minus 1 times 4.6. Now I need to put parentheses around that C14 minus 1. I need to put parentheses around that. Otherwise, the calculation will not be correct. And now I hit enter. There I go, 41.6. I'll do that again. I'll hit equal 10, which is n minus 1, times 2.77. Now, if I hit enter, and I don't use the parentheses, I get the wrong answer. So let me put parentheses around this, around the d14 minus 1. Make sure you do that. And hit enter again. And voila, 24.9, which is the correct value. Let me put those in the appropriate spots right there. And I just took those from the spreadsheet that we just calculated. Let me add those two values together. So I go back over to Excel. I hit the equal sign. And I click on 41.6 plus 24.9. Hit enter. That's 66.5. Now I put 66.5 into my equation. Now I'll calculate the denominator, and I'm going to call that B. Now I hit the equal sign, and I click on the 10 for hormone treatment, and then also, and I add this to the 10 to the placebo, which is the green and blue, minus 2, and hit enter, which is 18. And I put that in my equation, so you can follow along. So now I will add the blue in plus the green in, which is 20, but let me do that in Excel. So I had equal sign, 10 plus 10 is equal to 20. And now I hit enter, and I'll put that into my equation. Hey, we're getting there. Now I do n times n, which is 100, and I'll do that in Excel as well. So I do 10 times 10 is 100. Enter. There you go. Put it into my equation. 
Now I'm going to divide 66.5 divided by 18 and 20 divided by 100. Now I take 66.5 divided by 18 and hit enter. And then I take 20 divided by 100. And this is equal to 0.20. So I put in 3.69 and 0 0.20 into my equation. Now I multiply those two together, 0 0.20 times 3.69, and hit Enter. And that is 0.74. Now I'll take the square root of 0.74, so back over to Excel now. 0.74 little hat and then type in 0.5 which means one half hit enter which is 0.86 now I take 2.7 divided by 0.86 2.7 divided by 0.86 which is equal to 3.14 finally and this is really the result I'm looking for is 3.14. Now, how do we interpret this and what does this mean? So I have t. t is equal to 3.14. n is equal to 10. And n is equal to 10. Both sample sizes are 10. Degrees of freedom is equal to 18, which is n plus n minus 2. I want to be 95% confident and I'm going to do a two-tail test. So I draw my little bell curve, and I'm going to determine my critical region, or rejection regions, I should say, critical values. So my rejection regions are the red areas, and I'm looking for my critical values, which are those question marks there. These are the values that you'd find in the back of any typical stats test for these 90%, 95%, and 99% confidence levels. And down the side is degrees of freedom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in my case, this case. And I'll just put the values there. So I have 18 degrees of freedom, and I'm a 95% confidence. I can draw like a little yellow marker here. And where those two are there and here where they cross. So my critical value is 2.101, and I'll say 2.1, and also negative 2.1. So I go back to my results here, my null hypothesis, and I assume that these were equal experimental group and my control group. I determined my T score was 3.14, which is in the rejection region. So therefore, I reject the null hypothesis, rejected. And that's how you set up a spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel for a t-test of unrelated means. Share the knowledge, share the love. Facebook, Google+, Twitter. Comments and suggestions below. And like us, please like me. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm always posting new material.